survey. He's done a survey and he ends up with Likert scale data, which is the kind of data that you guys have in your student evals, you know, one to seven. And he doesn't know what to do with it. And there's a great question. You're going to actually attack that in your next homework set. You'll see how, when you have Likert scale data, what you should or shouldn't do with it. It's not in your textbook. Textbooks never even touch it. I don't know why, because it's the kind of, how many of you guys have done a Likert scale survey at some point in your lives, right? Come on now, three of you? There we go, exactly. I think every one of us in here has done one of those strongly agree, agree, neutral, just exactly, right? Say, oh, that's a Likert scale. Yeah, Likert scale is just a fancy name for the guy or the woman that invented the, the scaling system. And it's tricky. It's tricky because they're numbers, but they're not really numbers. They have to know what to deal with them. So when I hear they get negative feedback, what you have to know is, what, what, do you, what exactly do we mean by negative feedback? Is it that your numbers are low? Which numbers? The modal value that you're getting? The average value that you're getting? The median value that you're getting? Because those are going to necessarily be three different things on normal Likert scale data for us anyway. Does it mean your comments are negative? Because this is where being a human sucks totally. I have had more colleagues get their evals back, just like Rosie said, and be so upset about the negative responses. And then they show them to me and I go through and look and there's like one negative thing and 15 positive ones. I'm like, where's, where's the problem? Well, look at that right there. He's over here. But as humans, it's almost like we're drawn to the negative. Look at the news for God's sake. We're drawn to the negative, right? We, we, what I tell my colleagues if they want to feel better about their evals, take the most negative comment on the evaluation, pair it up with the most positive and throw them both out and look at the rest. Trim the mean, if you will. <laughs> Right? Do you know what I mean? Do it that way. Like, oh, I never thought about it that way. It's that place. Yeah, you know, the whole thing. The whole thing is don't don't stare at the outliers. Don't be Jared in your your student emails. This fifteen year old grandmother of four has a body like a. Don't, don't look at that. That's unrealistic. That's an outlier. You have to look at the the, the center of the data. So I understand it. I totally get it. I hear it all the time. I also think it's worth ignoring because the data I do get from you guys is so much more valuable than any small negative piece. And you have to realize, too, that the online evaluation process is better because it allows you guys to take them at your convenience as opposed to when you're here, not necessarily in the best of your mind. <clears throat> There's all kinds of reasons as to why you should do it. I think getting influenced by other classmates. Say that again? I think getting influenced by other classmates. It's possible. I don't know how to measure that, though. My teacher would give them out to us and then uh -huh. leave. And you yes. have one of us gather them and Of course, which is kind of, that's like school policy. Right. But... In turn, everyone would start talking about like, well, he never puts our grades up on time. Oh. You know what I mean? So you start getting influenced. I got you. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Well, and that could still theoretically happen. I mean, you could have like a wine and evaluation party at your house, and I'll bring your iPads. Why is that not focusing? Now it is. I'm really glad I put the three-year warranty on this thing because it's starting to act like a Microsoft product. <laughs> Oh, do that means for Let's bring this down first. All right, there we go. Focus on this. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. So what I want to do today is I want to revisit the rest of the course, which is what happened. What happens when we have to test more than one data set? Because this, so this example you just took was fantastic, except it's limited. Because it's limited by the fact that we only have one data set. We, for example, the CDC tests. You had a bunch of people that got the, the vaccine, and then we tested them. And the secondary test, which is not a very bad test, that matched pair test from the Institute of Psychiatry in London, Checking bulimic girls before and after a treatment program. That's fantastic. That's, that's, that's fantastic. But still, it's only one sample. What happens if you actually have independent samples? And the data I want to play with, the data I want to play with are the data that I had from checking my bike, from checking my bike before and after installing these brakes, these brakes on it. Now, when we were together last, which would have been last week, uh, Thursday, I guess it was, we did, we tried a couple things. Remember what we tried? Remember what we tried? A couple things. Actually, I, I've got to pause this real quick. I have to get that data back. I'm pretty sure I've erased it. Does anybody still have the data entered in their TIs? 